On Valentine's Day 2007, Matthew Reinertsen was born. He was 15 weeks premature. Life changed a little bit, I guess. Yeah, life with Matthew is um, quite full on. When I keep on trying, I can learn to do anything. Delivered by emergency caesarean section, Matthew weighed just 770 grams at the time of his birth. The next day, the doctor, Dr. Anderson, asked if we uh, chosen a name yet, and uh, he said, "No, we haven't quite yet. We're still still deciding." And he he said, "Well, look, you know, choose a good fighter's name because you know you got a little fighter on your hands here." So, yeah, and that's how Matthew came about. After three months of tests and operations, Matthew was finally allowed home. We did notice that Matthew was having feeding problems where he would just refuse. He would refuse the breast, he would refuse the bottle, uh, my expressed breast milk in the bottle. He just refused to feed and that was really, really stressful, very stressful. The small milestones he was delayed in, like in smiling and reaching and grasping and you know, trying to roll over and and even crawling, they were all delayed. It just wasn't happening with Matthew. Everything was just in slow motion for him. At the age of one, Matthew underwent an MRI scan and was diagnosed with cerebral palsy. It was just devastating to know that our child would be disabled and to what degree. Because no one plans on having a disabled child when you plan a family. You, you plan to have you know, the perfect family, you know, everyone being born, I hate to say normal, but you know, that's the term that gets used around a lot. The scan revealed that two cysts died, leaving dead white matter on Matthew's brain. This has inhibited his movement and muscle control. He has tight hamstring muscles, which is what the problem is from the brain signals. It's his hamstring muscles are just always tense. He has weak quad muscles and weak core muscles, and that's why he hasn't got that balance to be able to walk without a, a walking frame. Um, but we've been working on him for the last well, four years, I guess, with exercises and stretches. We get a lot of help through Novita Children's Services. Um, we get help from a physio. We get help from a speech therapist, occupational therapist, uh, and they're all there to help teach us how to teach Matthew basic motor skills that we can do naturally, um, but he can't. He's a headstrong little boy, so once he gets something in his head, he's uh, determined to, to do that. So, you, you know, you can't persuade him uh, any other way, um, I suppose, which we've been told is a good trait to have, someone that is uh, very headstrong, and if they're that determined, then, you know, they, you know, there's that likelihood of you know, him being able to walk uh, unassisted. So. Yeah, that's a, that's a positive we've been told, that a, a trait that he's got. Apple juice is yummy to drink, but not with tomatoes. He adores his sister. Uh, you know, they're always playing together and you know, she's always reading, reading to him and likewise she adores him and you know, I suppose yeah, Matthew, kids with disability, they're not uh, judgmental. Hello. We'd like people to understand more about disability. Before Matthew was born, we, I can only speak for myself, I had never met a disabled person. I didn't understand their daily struggles. So I guess for us, it's, it's about getting our story out there and, and having people understand uh, the ups and downs of having a child with a disability. And um, if there's something that they can do through research to help prevent this from happening to anyone else, that would just be just amazing. A realisation that some cerebral palsies are due to 
genetic susceptibility is a revolution in thinking and for the first time it may allow us to understand the real causes of cerebral palsy and not the myths that it's due to birth asphyxia. Once we understand the causes of cerebral palsy then we can start to look for interventions to prevent cerebral palsy. It has been a life-changing experience um, living with someone with a disability. Um, it's been a long road but I suppose when you look at him, at Matthew, it's, it's all worth it, you know, you know his, his gorgeous little smile, you know, I wouldn't, wouldn't have changed it, so, you know, to have, have Matthew in our lives, so, it's been a hard road, but it's been a good road.